Hi guys, Andrea Mills here. Um, some of you guys were wanting me to show you how to can um, food. So today I'm going to show you how to do water bath canning and then another day we'll do some pressure canning. But right now we had 90 pounds of plums off of our little tiny plum tree and we've got about half of them done already but I'm still working on them today so I'll show you how this um, works. Now I've already showed you how to use the steam juicer so we're juicing some of our plums and we're going to fill this pot up and I'm going to use the juice to make some jelly. I also started some juice here to turn into wine. There will be a video coming out about how to do that also. We also um, dried some plums so that this jar is filled with dried plums or prunes. The kids have already helped me pick all the stems off of these plums and we sorted out any that had um, they were getting too soft or had damage and those are being juiced and then these good ones are going to be canned. Now I'm going to be using my water bath canner that I got at Walmart and um, it can hold seven quarts but before I had one of these I used my stock pot to can with. So you can use any pot to do water bath canning so if you are just excited and want to try this out um, any pot that you already have that's deep enough will work. So if you don't have a deep pot you could always use small jars so that you could still um, try this at home. So you just need to make sure that there's enough height to the pot that your jars will have at least an inch of water over the top when you submerge them in the water. And a canning pot comes with a rack to protect so like the jars are sitting directly on the bottom of the pot and you can also lift them with that. But if you don't have a canning rack or actual canning pot you can take a dish towel put it inside the pot and then fill it with water and that will act as your canning rack to protect your jars. I'm also using this pair of tongs, canning tongs, to lift my jars. But before I had one of those I just used this pair of tongs and they work just fine too. So inside here I have boiled my jars and my rings that I'm going to use. These were some I've used many times before so I just store them with the rings on them. I boiled them to sterilize them. You can sterilize in the oven or if you have a sterilized feature on your dishwasher you could do that too. Um, I always just do this because I have to fill the pot and get the water boiling anyway so um, I just always stick my jars in there but there's more than one way to do it. Then in this pot this is some syrup that I made that is two parts water to one part sugar and I use the evaporated cane juice sugar so it's like kind of brown so that's why it looks not clear but that's going to be my syrup for my plums but you can you can make that um, thicker or thinner if you want so you could use like for every three cups of water do one cup of sugar or even four cups of water to one cup of sugar you can do equal amounts so one cup of sugar and one cup of water okay so I've washed my plums and then I'm gonna just pack them into the jars all the way nice and tight to the top also in the meantime I started another batch of jars sterilizing in my pot on the stove while I'm doing this. Okay, the jars are all filled and now we're going to put the syrup in. I'm going to use my canning funnel, but if you don't have one, you can just try to be neat and go without. And I like to fill my jar up just to the bottom of the funnel there. And usually for a quart, that's about four ladles full. Just need a little more. Then we're going to wipe all the rims with a moist paper towel to make sure they're nice and clean. And also we can be feeling to make sure that they're smooth and there's no nicks in the glass. Because if there is, then it won't seal and we shouldn't use that jar. And then we can put on our lids and the rings. The purpose of the rings is just to hold the lid on until it's processed. You don't actually have to store it with that because this part will be attached to the jar then 
but I like the way they look so I usually store them with the ring on but you don't have to you can just reuse the rings on your next batch and these are all ready to go in the canner okay so these are loaded in the rack and then I'll lower them down into the water but I can't do that with one hand so I'm going to turn off the camera and lower them in I need to process these plums for 20 minutes, but if you're doing some other kind of fruit, it's gonna have a different amount of time. So whatever you're doing, I'm just showing you a basic thing. You might um, obviously need to cut up the fruit or um, process it for a different amount of time. You could actually season it, like put vanilla or cinnamon or whatever other spices you want into the syrup. Um, so if you're wanting to try this with something else, just look up online and all over the place you'll find someone telling you the times and all that that you need to know. And just in case you don't know what I mean when I say process, that just means boil the jars for that amount of time. While those are processing, I can get started on my next batch of jars. Okay, they've boiled for 20 minutes and now we can pull them out. And you can see that the plums do not look the same as they did when I put them in. While I have the next batch processing, I'm hoping that we'll get to hear one of these seal. It'll make a pop sound. These ones are sealed. They don't bounce anymore. This one hasn't sealed yet. It's still kind of bouncy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just pushed it on and it's stuck now. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to wipe down the jars. We have very hard water here, so I usually have to wipe down the outsides of the jars. And sometimes the jars will leak a little while they're processing and get syrup on the outside, and that's fine. Just clean it up. and. As long as it's sealed, you're good to go.